video on a high speed rail in Canada is very different difficult because there's nothing there. There's nothing to make a video talking about it about because it doesn't exist. But thanks to the help of high speed rail high speed rail Canada, I was able to gather some information and for rail explained. The first parts of this are going to be a rehash of what they said. If you want to watch it in full, just head over to their channel. I'll leave a link in the bottom below. This is going to talk about high speed rail and some stuff I didn't talk about my Alberta rail video about. So it's going to be like a part two and a completely different saga. It's. In uh, January and February, then there'll be some updates, like, hopefully, like, there'll be updates from, um, in January, there'll be the high-speed upgrade, updates about what's happening, if it's being built, I hope it's being built, and in February, or by February, there's going to be some updates about the train to Calgary or Banff, they really need a name for it, um, let me think of a name right off the bat, why do I see Banff? Why was he trying no? Mm. Cal Bath train? Cal Bath train. Cal C A L Banff. Ban. Ban. Cal Ban. <laughs> Cal Ban. Okay, yeah, let's call it the Cal Ban train. I just came off with that right off the bat, so it's gonna take me a while. The name of the high speed rail that's being planned in Alberta is called Prairie Link. It's linking the prairies. Yeah, not the creative, not the most creative name, but whatever. High speed rail in Alberta is possible. In 1980, there was a study done by the government of Alberta to see if it was a good idea to build a high speed rail in Alberta, and they found that it was a good idea to build it. To build it, the study took account the building of a brand new electrified railway that would have a sp top speed of 270 kilometers or 168 miles per hour and the travel time would be one hour and 40 minutes the 1983 study said that the substructure would be 370 three, three, 370.2 million CAD Canadian dollars. The sub sub culture sub culture? I have no idea what that is. Would be 4.4.2 million. The rolling stock and the maintenance facility would cost 1.108 million. And the total cost would be 9.2. 927.2 million but if we put that into today's dollars that moolah it would be around 2.25 billion dollars and that would be that is a lot less than the capital cost of the Calgary Green Line which is around 5.5 billion and is a lot less than the capital cost of the Valley Line which is around 1.8 billion Jesus, absolute Christ. In 1995, the government of Alberta updated the study starting stating that the project would be was premature because the high cost and ridership of and the high ridership in the air and popularity of travels which is a problem, which I find absolute bullshit because here's a fact. If you build infrastructure and for public transportation and you make it a you make people say, hey, this is better. People will do it because if something is cheaper, I live my life by this. If something is cheaper and can get me there faster, I'm taking it. I don't care about my comfortability. As long as it's cheaper, safe, I'm taking it. That's the thing. When people say because of car popularity, you can't break it. No, you can break it. When you break it, you can get high service because people like ah this is better than driving i can sit down and relax i'll talk about that later on down the video so stay tuned i'll skip to that part i have no idea when it is there was an update done in 2004 about high speed rail in cal 
in Alberta, Calgary, there was a cost update of the study in 2011 and in 2014. The 2011 cost update is all we have. It says that there are three alternatives. The first alternative is upgrading the old railway that, w- that goes between Calgary and, Al- and Edmonton, which is owned by CP Rose and was built by the Calgary uh, by the Calgary Edmonton Company. I don't know. I forgot this. It's been a long time since I watched the video. But all you need to know, it's on my CP Rose now. And it's meant for cargo movement. And... Passenger rail stopped in 1985 because of declining numbers. Fun fact, via rail actually sent... Uh, you can't completely blame it on via rail for why there's no passenger train in between Calgary and Edmonton. Via rail sent them a message saying, Hey geniuses, you have you have low ridership. We're about to discontinue. You have to make an effort. And the government was like, Nah, let's not worry about it. So, yeah. Yeah. The fools of the past to make the decisions of today. Make all... The decisions we face today, which is fun. The first alternative mass speed would be 240 kilometers, which is 150 miles per hour, and it will take 2 hours and 10 minutes. The type of rolling stocks would be the Bombardier Jet Train. The Jet Train is a high-speed trail that's like uh, not electrified. It's just not diesel or something. I don't know. I forgot about it. But yeah. It was actually a pretty good idea. It could have been awesome. If another company was to create something like the jet train now and actually sold it well, I'm pretty sure people would buy it because it wasn't electrified. It didn't force people to make, it didn't force companies to make their railways electrified and you would get high speeds. And the jet train was good. I wish it was actually sold to multiple companies because if it was sold to Via Rail, like, Amtrak or other passenger rail in North America, it's incredible. It's taken away from diesel. It's not taken away from diesel, but it's still good. <laughs> the second cost alternative is a t- second co- the co- no not the second the cost of the first alternative will be 2.9 billion dollars that includes getting the rolling stock the second alternative now right it is using a not electrified dedicated right away which would be built that would be built would have a top speed of 240 kilometers per hour which there's absolutely no difference so the second alternative is out and yeah, could it be out let's think about this for a second the second alternative doesn't require using CP Rail's tracks, and it's it doesn't require using CP Rail's, which means it won't have to slow down for the slow-moving freight trains, and it would create new jobs and create a new track, so it could work. It's not completely out, but uh, I have mixed feelings about it. Which would have 150 miles per hour, as said before. It would also use the jet train. Jet train, jet train, jet train. The travel time will be 1 hour and 46 minutes. Why is it? Why is the travel time so different? Because of not having to use CP rails and so on for the trucks. That's what I believe. The cost will be 4.1 billion. Jesus, that's high. The third alternative was a fully electrified railway. It would use the same style as the TGV train. The T- TGV is the French high-speed rail train. It's what they use. It's the name of their company. I don't know what it stands for. I'll put it up on the screen if I want to. The train would run at 300, kilo- 300 kilometers per hour, which is 168 miles per hour, giving it an hour and 30 minutes it would cost about $5.5 billion. In the report, it says that there's absolutely no difference in choosing the alternatives, choosing alternative, the third or second alternative, because any company that wants to build fast, they can't, oh, it shows, it says there's no absolutely no difference in choosing the alternatives. But part of me suggests they should choose the second alternative, because any company that wants to build fast trains in Canada, they can't be stopped by slow-moving freight or cargo passenger rail that does not 
that in Canada does not have priority thanks to the government of Canada wanted not wanted to make it pr- passenger rail prioritize. But Alberta says is that if it wasn't done in nineteen eighty three to start buying out the land the government of Alberta said they should start buying out the land because it's soon gonna get expensive, so let's buy it when it's cheap so we can make the tracks and the station. But a part of me also thinks the city should build the third alternative, a fully electrified railway, which is a lot better than in the environment than using diesel powered trains, which makes it easier to accelerate with um, electric power trains, but it's cheaper and like, it's if it was using something like the Bombardier jet train, I really really wants a company to make something like the jet train. Maybe the company that Bombardier sold their train department to. Maybe if they should make something like this because you gotta think about it for a second. They created a train because like it was good and if a company was to make that now it would be incredible. Uh, I already said this before. The trains would travel at 350 kilometers per hour through the Calgary Edmonton Cards. It would connect to Calgary in an hour. The cost of the ticket would be around 80 to 120 dollars, which is not that bad compared to like um plane tickets in that corridor. The train route would probably go along the Queen Elizabeth Highway too. It would also connect. It would. It would connect to Calgary right there for cost of yeah. That suffice. It would connect in Calgary, Red Deer, Edmonton. I'll talk about that later on. The reasons why it will go along the Queen Elizabeth II Highway is because it's the because this highway goes through the through every city or along every city swap out in the Calgary Edmonton or corridor and is and this highway is pretty straight highway. It's also the most used highway in Alberta. Which will make it easier for the trains to accelerate because it doesn't have to go at any sharp angles to slow down. It will have five stations. It's, that's what I think. I think it's logical for it to have five stations. They are Calgary International Airport. Okay, let me put this in order. Downtown Calgary using Tower Center. I just, I want that station to be reused because recycle, baby. We live in a new world, baby. We gotta recycle. Downtown Calgary, YYC Airport, um, Calgary International Airport, Red Deer, YEG, Edmonton International Airport, and probably at Edmonton's VIA rail station, which probably have to be expanded. Deer station will have to be in the city center of, of Red Deer. The Edmonton station will be at Edmonton International Airport and another one at Edmonton VIA rail station. The possibility of high-speed rail could work, but it would have to be done right to work in Alberta. First, it cannot be po- politi- politicalized. Po- political. Yeah, it can't become political. can't become politics. It can't be a way for the government of Alberta to gain more money from the, the Canadian government. The second is it can't have useless stops. By useless stops, I mean stops in the Calgary Edmonton Board Corridor. It can't have a stop at Airdrie, Ludus, or any of these small towns or villages, whatever. I think Red Deer is a good stop because it's in the middle of it and it stops at the biggest, three biggest cities, Calgary, Edmonton, Red Deer. It can't have a stop at every small town along the route because it will lose so much money in building a station and slowing down and starting and slowing down and starting. For a train to work, it is important for it to have a central location in the downtown. 
for Calgary, it has to be in downtown Calgary. So it can pick up people from the southeast, southwest, and northwest, or northeast, whichever one. Mostly in the southeast and southwest communities, and more cities that are outside of Calgary. <laughs> There are going to be a, there's going to be a station at Calgary International Airport because you need a station at your airport to pick up and drop people off from the airport so they can just go. Let's say there's someone in Red Deer that wants to go to uh, Florida, yeah, Florida, and they don't want to take their regional airports of Calgary and then go all the way. What they could do is just hop on the high speed rail, which is like, let's be conservative and give it $120 boom getting it's probably gonna be less than that because that's from Calgary to Edmonton it's probably gonna be let's divide that by two not divided by two let's go $90 middle middle is a good one boom a lot cheaper and you can just get on that train boom you're ready here and your $500 your probably a thousand dollar trip would go down if because you're taking a high speed train. I just think we should build it. And for Red Deer Central Station, it's not gonna be a problem because there's lots of room in Red Deer because it's a small town. In the city center, it has to be in a city center. It can't be off to the edges of the city where they have to build a but they have to buy some buses to bring people there because let's get this straight if they have to buy a bus that means they have to pay more pe they have to pay more people than they need to and build a maintenance facility a bus routes all that buses and just it's and red deer could also be a good place for the pl for the for the towns that don't for the cities and towns that won't have it or villages, I mean, that want to have it, you can just pick up, pick them up and they can go to Calgary or Edmonton, whichever, whichever hellhole they want to visit. I think high-speed rail in Calgary could be built, but it could take off so many cars, remove planes, stop roads from being expanded, which would cause less emissions in Alberta and create more jobs. I don't think the small towns that won't have stations should try to stop it, stop the train from, try to derail the train. Maybe it's because I live in the biggest city in Alberta, but I don't think they should try and stop, try and, f I don't think they should try and stop it. They should try and force the government of Alberta to create AB trains, Alberta trains. That's what I, that's what the name of the, of the trains is going to be, or the company. I'm not really sure. Uh, I personally think they should call it Alberta Transit. I'll talk about why and like what they could add later on. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but I'm going to have an interview with um, Regional Rail, uh, Alberta Regional Rail or AB Transit, they're the same company, um, soon. So it's going to be a podcast on my podcast on Anchor FM. So stick around if you want to listen or hear that podcast. Yeah, they should try and get the government of Alberta to make AB trains a fast, or just existing, fast moving freight train, uh, not freight, passenger transit, like they do on their map. And Prairie Link could be an express route because on the uh, Alberta region, regional rail for Alberta, they even have something that says, ooh, ex reg regular regional rail transit and express transit. It doesn't have a station in um, Red Deer, but that could always be changed, but a little dot. And it could be an express route for people to get there. Let's say you have a meeting, and let's say you're just hanging out relaxing, and your boss suddenly calls you on your cell phone, ring, 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 ring. Saying that there's a meeting set that your boss set a meeting in two hours and would set a meeting in two hours and you need to get there as quickly as possible. 
it would take you two and a half hours by flying or three hours by driving. But if you take but if you take our premium link, it would give you you would get there an hour and thirty minutes, which would give you would get you would get there an hour before your meeting, which would give you about thirty minutes to get your resonations and letters started and saying your boss is an idiot and you cannot handle the incompetency of this company and that is why you are leaving it and another thirty minutes to get ready for the meeting. So yeah. Prairie would be would use traditional high speed rail such as the ones in Europe and Asia, which makes me wonder, will he use will he design its own rolling stock or use other nations rolling stocks like the T G V or the Shinkansen line or the China railway lines. I don't know what they're called. Look that up. Or will they get it from a North American company? Who knows? All these questions will answer in due time. If you're wondering about Alberta Regional Rail for Alberta and how high speed rail would affect them, I don't think it would affect them that badly because there's still the small towns and villages that won't be be connected by high speed rail so well in Alberta and they could operate the service between Calgary and Edmonton and the, and have stuff at every single one of those cities, towns and villages. Yes, they might need some more traffic, but there will still be a lot busy. There'll still be a lot busy business, and they could also expand to Fort McMurray, Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Jasper National Park. They, they could even get buses. Yes, buses, and change their name from not AB trains to Alberta transit let me explain um with go transit it's called go transit not go trains go transit is basically their it's their full name they have buses and trains the buses go to small towns places that aren't pop that don't have the population for a rail but have the high high enough population where a bus could work that is the same logic AB Transit, AB Trains could use because that's something they even recognize. They're going to use the same, they're going to have the same max speed as Go, Tra Go Transit does with its trains, 145 kilometers per hour. One of the, another negative that could be said about Alberta is the fact that it's so cost centralized. And that no one would ride the train because of that. For many people, if there's a high speed train, people would ride it because it's cheaper than driving the mileage. So yeah, I think that argument could work. If it is built, people would use it. It's a great idea when it's used on positive things. I think we should build this high speed rail because in 1984, you were supposed to build one, but we didn't because the government but it was like let's keep doing studies about it but never built it because and back in 2004 the premier of Alberta said my goal is to build high speed rail if elected but she was not elected again and the other premier was like now nah, we're not gonna build a high speed rail who do you think we are transit activists The project is going to be privately funded, and that it's that that's a positive, which means it won't be taking any money from the taxpayer. So it shouldn't be stopped by people saying it's not gonna work. It's just gonna be a dumpster fire. Hey, it's not your money they're spending. They're spending their own money and their company's money. That's a positive. And if it was to fail, it could be good. Let's say it fails at the end of it, after a couple of years of declining numbers and not enough people taking the train and they decide, Fairlink decides, hey, we're going to sell you this thing, do you want it? The government about to could be like, yeah, sure, hand it over. And one day, we could build our own high speed one when we read the population. 
or let's say it fails at the point where they've acquired all the land and they're like, yeah, we're not going to build this anymore. It's too much of a money trap. They could sell it over to government of Alberta. The government of Alberta could keep it and just, like, say, hey, we've reached the population. Let's start this train. I don't want this to fail. I want it to work because it could be incredible. And one of the positives, we were able to see high speed rails in places, high speed rails such as in places like China, Japan, Italy, France, Sweden. So, yeah. One of the things I like that I like about Fairlink is the fact that it's relatively cheap compared to other high speed rail, such as Texas Central connecting Dallas and Houston, Texas in the US, US of A. Ayo! Texas Central is going to co- is going to cost sixteen billion dollars, which is around twenty billion dollars for us cabs. While Fairlink is going to cost nine billion dollars, which is around five point six billion to you, you freedom loving, freedom loving freaks. And you could also know it's connecting their two biggest city and their capital city together. That's the same thing it's doing with Fairlink. Um, uh, Dallas is like Edmonton, and Houston is like Calgary. Another positive, it, they both hate their leaders, but like Calgary, I mean not Calgary, Alberta hates Jason Kenney. He's an idiot, a fucking dumb motherfucker that should be removed from office painfully. And Ted Cruz is just, fact, fact, they're both from Calgary. <laughs> oh my god. Both of them are from Calgary. Ted Cruz was born in Alberta Children's Hospital. Oh my god. Jesus Christ, the common denominator. Do, 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 do. Calgary is the common denominator of weird people. And the fact that Prairie Link. One of the negatives I don't like about it is the fact that Prairie Link is going to take seven to nine years to finish construction, while Texas Central is only going to take five years. And Texas Central has already started construction, or is about to start construction. I hope in mid. I hope it starts construction in mid to early twenty twenty two. Have construction done by 2026 or 2027. Something I hope that Prairie Link does not have to go through is a bunch of losses by a bunch of people who don't want passenger rail and are better slowing them down and the amount of money they would have to spend on it. Another thing that is similar is the fact that they're both 100% private, which means no money comes from tax rates, which is good in this situation and bad in other situations. It's all about context, people. One of the things that must happen is the three companies that want to build passenger rail in Calgary must all talk for the downtown station and the airport station. Four, four must talk with CP Rails also because CP Rails is going to be like, hey, 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 the station. And they also gonna have to talk on different places. Something that would something that would mind would make people mad living in the Quebec City winter corridor would would be why the fuck does would be why the fuck don't we have high speed rail because you, and my response is because your politics is doing everything and that's why you don't have high speed rail and if you want high speed rail get the Canadian government to turn that uh high frequency rail into a high speed rail because it's clear the Canadian government listens to you whatever listens to you over other types of Canadian peoples. One of the positive things about trains is the fact they're not within you don't have to weigh your bags, check your bags in and it's not an airport, it's just not just the positive. So all you have to do is buy your ticket and wait for your train to arrive and then when it comes all you have to do is board the train and then you can hope 
it has Wi-Fi because trains nowadays are getting Wi-Fi, so you can just play games, get business meetings, get all that stuff out. I hope Paralink build, builds a high-speed rail for Alberta, and for those who think Alberta should not get a high-speed rail, you should try not to stop it from happening because your opinion is invalid and you are wasting your time. I'm joking, I'm joking, you're joking. Your opinion is valid. But let's just see where it goes. Nope, negatives. Because there are some negatives, but the negatives don't outweigh the positives. The positives outweigh the negatives. Let's go. Thank you. Have a great day. You are awesome and incredible.